Champions League competition. They are traveling to Egypt later this week to play against Libyan opponent Al Tahadi. We bring you letters from their camp. You also have something from uh, the camp of Andre Didayu. We have something from the camp of Star Times and then on the international front to bring you uh, lots, lots of um, issues that, uh, lots of stories on the weekend's matches that were played. And so these are many more coming up here on the show in the next quarter of an hour. <laughs> All right, so let's get on to business now. And Adriana Stars Football Club are expected to leave Ghana later this week to play Libyan side Al Tahiri in the first leg of the Champions League preliminary stage match. Ghana Premier League champions, the Ghana Premier League champions will be playing their Libyan opponent Al Tahadi FC in Egypt um, uh, on Sunday. This has, this has become necessary because of the current political situation in Libya, which has forced their game outside their territories for over half a decade now. Albert Komi is the chief executive officer of Adriana Stars, and he has been running me through with the travel arrangements of the club. The club will leave Ghana on the 8th, uh, that is this coming Thursday, at 1 p.m. with Egypt Air, and land by 9.30 in Cairo. The match will be played in Cairo now, instead of the earlier Casablanca, they've changed it to Cairo. Sorry, instead of uh, Alexandra, now they're playing the match in Cairo. The match will be played on the 11th time p.m. Uh, Egyptian time. We will return on the that is the Monday to Ghana. All right. Now, Albert Kome has also been updating us on renovation works at the Nana Ajiman Bedou Park in Doma, um, at Doma, where the club is suspected to host the second leg if they are cleared by the Confederation of African Football. Work has gone on very well. Let me start with the pitch. I go to that part of the country and the way the grass look green. You, you marvel. A lot of work have gone into it. The poles, the markings have been done. And um, the expert will tell you that uh, the park is ready. The only thing we need is to we keep making sure that uh, the intensity that we started with is maintained to make sure that the grass will be well conditioned for any match. We're also looking at the stands. We have two types. The metal stands, for instance, I would say that uh, it's almost 80% complete. And um, the sitting fittings that we need to, is ongoing. And I'm very positive that uh, by one week or two weeks time, it should be okay. The concrete seats work is also ongoing. One part will be ready, the other part two will be ready. We don't want to risk because we want it to make sure that this it has clean, dried up, well conditioned before we make people mount it. So, so far, so good. We also did the, all the fittings and everything. We go to the dressing room, the drop, everything. We have them ready. We are waiting for the second inspection for the final and I'm very happy that you will go through. All right, so that was Albert coming there for you. He speaks. Um, he's the chief executive officer of Adriana Stars Football Club. Now, let's do something else from the camp of Star Times. And remember, Star Times are the broker's rights holders of the Ghana Premier League, and they have expressed their displeasure at the Premier League board for not consulting um, them before coming out with the fixtures uh, for the new football season, which starts this weekend. And according to Ali Kondo, who happens to be the public relations officer of um, Star Times, this development um, has not been the best. They feel that um, it should not be repeated. And he says that the collaboration between the GFA, the PLB, and Star Times has not been the best so far. Feasible, um, I don't know if it's the right word though, but it's not, it's not really feasible. The thing is that um, initially we had plans of covering a maximum four games per each match week this season. Reason for the proposal of match days like Friday, Saturday, Sunday, all through to Monday, four different days. And then the actual plan was that assuming we're going to the southern sector, we know that okay, well, we have Cape Coast and Botswana Dwarfs playing, Elmina Shark also around there, and um, probably we could have Accra and then some other teams in Accra. So if we have this sector and we have like four different teams playing home, home games during a particular match week, that would be very feasible that we can travel from Accra, cover the number of teams within Accra, move on to Central Region, cover the number of teams also there, Elmina, Cape Coast. So all of these within one week from Friday all through to Monday would have been able to capture as many as four games within one match week. That if the PLB is able to schedule teams to play home games within one match week who are closer, that will help good coverage. But if the games are scattered across, so uh, this match week we have one team in a half playing at home, there is 
have traveled across to different centers. That would be very difficult for TV coverage. Unfortunately, that wasn't discussed and well planned out between us and the PLB. The lead fixtures were released to the media before it got to us and making it difficult to even make enough input to change things. All right, so how can the PLB be releasing fixtures to the media even before consulting your broadcast right holders? I think that one is below the belt. But the, by the current arrangement, Ali Kondo says that Star Times will be able to broadcast just about two matches instead of their plan to do four matches every weekend. That's how come they requested the PLB to make sure that matches will be played on Friday, Saturdays, Sundays, and Mondays. We are hoping that probably the, next, the, next, the second round of the, of the league will, will make room for such things so we can have enough matches on TV. At the moment, what we have from the PLB will, will limit us to probably three to two matches every match week. Uh, and that is not really what we're looking at doing this season. We are not organizers of the league. We are here to do broadcasting. So if there's no proper planning given to us to schedule how we go about our broadcasting, it's going to be difficult to put everything on TV. I, I told you earlier we had one OB one. Now, if games between or women's league games are scheduled at the same time simultaneously as the Premier League games, it will be difficult to abandon the games that have been tagged as a flagship product of the FA. All right, it's seven minutes into three here on your support station, Love 19.5 FM program is Sports Flash. Now, Black Stars assistant coach Ibrahim Tanko has expressed his happiness at Ghana forward Andre Ayu rejoining former club Swansea City FC in the English Premier League. Now, the 28-year-old completed a record deal worth £18 million to rejoin his former side from West Ham on the tr winter transfer deadline last Wednesday. And Tanko says, and I quote, I think it is a good move for Andre to enjoy City. At Swansea City, he is going back to a club he knows already where he enjoyed his debut campaign in England, scoring 12 goals out of 35 games before moving to West Ham uh, United, he said. Now, meanwhile, Andre himself says it's not going to be an easy task trying to escape relegation, but is confident together with his colleagues they can survive their top flights. When you get in the middle of the season, it's already different, you know, when you come in, in, in January. But um, what's important is that, you know, we keep the club up. If the club has shown me a lot of trust and a lot of determination to bring me in, it means that I need to, I need to show down the field and, you know, give it back to them. And that's by doing everything possible to let the club stay in the premiership. You know, that's my challenge, that's my goal. That's not just mine, but the whole squad, whether the, the players, the, the staff and everyone. So that's what I'm here, I'm here for and I'm going to do everything I can to, to make sure it happens. But uh, we need to just get, you know, um, that into our heads that we we are a premiership side and we want to be a premiership side for f more years to come. So we need to do everything possible to not, you know, let the fans down and, and everyone. So it's, it's not going to be easy because everyone wants to stay up. And when you look at the league from the 20th to the 10th or well, ninth, it's... All right, so that's Andre Ayu there for you, and he'll be united with his brother Jordan once again at the Welsh club uh, since both left um, Olympic Marseille in 2015 and 2014, respectively. And the Ghana number two has hailed it, and he says that he's happy to be playing once again with his brother. That's his younger brother. Now, Daniel Paris agent Chris Nathaniel has hit back at German side Osberg for ripping up the contract of his client. The Bundesliga outfit on Saturday announced it had parted ways with the Ghana defender for violating the club's values of teamwork and honesty and repeatedly telling lies. This was after grainy images of a meeting of grainy images of a meeting with Schalke coach Domenico Tedesco at Dusseldorf Airport circulated just after the transfer window shut. Nathaniel of NV8 Sports and Entertainment Group said uh, he's shocked by the, false, um, by the recent false malicious statements about my client Daniel Opare. The offer from the club did not meet his client's requirement and he was subsequently banished from first team activities and even asked to clear his locker, which I found petty and unprofessional considering he has been at the club for some 30 months. That's um, close to two years. The malicious comments made by Stefan Reiter highlights how bitter the club are due to him not signing his new contract. And so now Nathaniel, um, Daniel Opari has been um, ripped off his um, contract, so he's a free agent to move to any club of his choice. And I will not be surprised if he does does move or does make a move to Schalke or for still in the German Bundesliga. <laughs>
All right, let's turn our attention to the international front. And former Arsenal defender Emmanuel Eboy has admitted he is desperate to return to the football pitch following the revelation of his heartbreaking personal struggles. The Ghana's court hero previously revealed he had seriously considered taking his own life after financial mismanagement left him penniless with a bitter divorce, meaning he has been estranged from his three children since the summer. Eboy has now opened up about his recent downward spiral insisting he wants to play football again as he feels abandoned and completely alone. Uh, the free agent told French TV uh, show Canal, all I want is return to football once more. I still possess the ability. I will even go to places like Baghdad or Pakistan just to play football. I don't care wherever. Sad to hear, but we are hoping that he's able to put his back, uh, his life back and be able to construct himself very well and have maybe, yes, another fruitful football career. Now, let's do something more on football here. And um, Hurricane says that he's thankful for scoring a second penalty that gave him 100 goals in the English Premier League. Now, the Tottenham striker um, is thankful for the chance to redeem his 80, 87th minute penalty miss to claim his 100th Premier League goal with a stoppage time spot kick to end a two, a two to draw at Liverpool. Yeah, obviously nervous, uh, a big moment, uh, a lot of pressure, um, but look, I stuck to the routine, I have a routine every time I take a penalty, uh, the first one, the keeper stayed down the middle, we saved it, fair play to him, and the uh, second one, I, had a, I wanted to go that corner, I went that corner and, and thankfully scored. It wasn't just to rescue the game, it was to score your 100th Premier League goal, there's a, there's a lot on that. Yeah, no, there was a lot of pressure in front of the, the cop end as well, and I'd say first one, done everything I wanted to, and uh, keepers made a save, as a striker always say, sometimes it, it just don't go in, and you've got to wait for the next opportunity and, and take it, and... Uh, you don't expect to get a, an, another penalty, uh, but I thought it was a penalty um, taken out of the meta there, so I uh, was thankful for that, and uh, yeah, I was thankful I put it away. Now, though Hurricane is excited, um, it's not everybody who is exci excited because um, boss of Liverpool, that is um, uh, Georgian Club, says that he can understand um, all the two penalties that were awarded Tottenham late in the game, although Hurricane missed one of them. He says that, uh, Georgian Club says that he left puzzled by referee Jonathan Morse's decision to award Tottenham Hotspur two late penalties in that 2 2 drawn game. No, but I saw the situations back, um, the two penalty penalty situations. So, and I, I don't understand them, both of them. The first one is clear offside. Now you can say, yeah, but he made a, made a save. That's true. But um, And they discussed. I have no idea why it was clear offside. So we all, our position was offside, but we didn't see that it was that clear. And then the, the, the second penalty, I know already what uh, ref and the assistant will say afterward. There's a little touch, but we all know Lamela jumps in and virtually wants the situation. He wants the touch and he wants to go down. That's it. And I think it's the ref says, come on, keep on playing. That was the level of the game today. A lot of situations in the first half where everybody thought it was a foul, but they keep on going, so then it's the level of the game. And with the softest touch in the whole game, you decided, wow, that's really hard. Wow, that's what he says. Um, Georgian club there for Yerami, who has in Venga, says he was delighted with the performance of um, Pierre Mariko Bemiyang, who was playing his first Premiership game for Arsenal, and Henrik Mikitian, who was playing his second game. Mikitian got um, three assists there, and Bemiyang got a goal, and as in Venga, it's all praise for the two. Your first impressions of your two new signings in an Arsenal shirt. I mean, how, how excited are you by the presence of uh, Bamiyong and Makatarian? It's of course very early, but uh, it looks they have the quality to integrate the game we want to play. They are uh, quick, sharp movement, uh, agile, and uh, want the ball, you know, so that's very uh, good. Or they are very good signs, very positive signs. Of course, not everybody can play. I must. All right, so um, that's Arsene Wenger there for you know. Meanwhile, I'm um, also in Old Trafford. Um, Jesse Moreno also praised the side for that 2 0 win over Huddersfield Town. All goals coming in the second half, and Alexis Alex Sanchez scoring his first goal in um, a Man United Jesse at Old Trafford. And Alexis won the penalty and then scored it on the rebound. Nice for him to get off the mark in a United shirt. Yeah, nice for him to win a match, the first Premier League match at home. Nice for him to play well, nice for him to show uh, the desire he has, the happiness he has playing football. I think that is the most important thing. Then the goal come, probably is not the goal of his dreams, but it's a goal. All right, and finally, Jose Moreno says he's confident Manchester United won't require any further attacking reinforcements after signing Alexis Sanchez. Okay, so that is it for Sports Flash here today on your Superstation Love 99.5 FM. Coming to you, kind Kennedy, Tabia Herbal Mixture, as well as um, that is um, Pakum for uh, premature ejaculation, and then also Prestige Capital. All right, now let's see what's on board today on Drive Talk. And um, 
Uh, quickly, um, let's see. Okay, let me go through this. It says that my fiancé um, lives in Ho and I'm in Kumasi. Sometimes she visits male friends in Sunyane and Techiman, where she stays up to a week in some instances. On her return from one of her trips, she wanted to pass by my place, but I refused. Another time, she was in Kumasi to visit her auntie. She sent me a message that she was at my at my office to see a male friend, so I shouldn't be surprised if I see her around. We are a few months away from our wedding, but I don't go into this. I'm so confused and don't understand what is going on between us. Your, your girlfriend likes male friends too much. Stop it. I mean, how can you and lady always having boyfriends, boyfriends, boyfriends? Oh. It's, the signs are clear. If she gets married, she'll still be attached to male, 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 male. I'm not saying that you shouldn't have male friends, yes, but hey, you can travel from Ho to Techima to go and visit, visit a male friend. A few months so, away from your wedding. I think that the guy should be advising himself. <laughs> Master, this thing shouldn't go into this. But I think she's spreading the news. She's doing what? Spreading the news. Sp sp spending the news? No, spreading, spreading. Spreading the news. Yeah, that uh, wedding is soon, I mean... <laughs> So you leave your station to another. It's, it's frequent, or not once. Or, hey, and she stays, him. and you start she can stay for a week. Yes, with male friends, telling them that I'm about to wait. Actually, <laughs> last if, minute. If it happened to you, would you have gone ahead? What is it? <laughs> Love ninety nine point five FM.